Remember this big fat magazine reverse collage art journal that Dee Dee Willingham got me started off on last year? Watching Dee Dee Willingham. This is the magazine idea playground project. But the reason I'm showing it to you is because with Dee Dee Willingham, the very first things that she had pointed out to us were the W questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Now, even though these are not in a mind-mapped situation, these are the questions that she uses when she does a mind map, and you'll see that more as we work with mind mapping. And some of my first mind maps, well, the very first one I did, if I can find it here, was this one. This was my very first mind map that I did inspired by Dee Dee Willingham. And she gave us a homework assignment to use a photograph and several smaller photographs around it and mind map the elements together and mine turned out to be a story and I have the visual mind map here which I found to be very inspiring just totally inspiring but I talked about all of these visual elements here and I kind of charted out a story here like who was the Coney Island bathing beauty cutie and here she is right here. Who was this lady? What was she doing? Well, the, she's sending a postcard from her weekend at Coney Island. And you can barely see that in there. As I got to working with this, I was telling this story of this Coney Island bathing cutie. Now, I'd heard about mind mapping before, but I never did too much with it. Boo for me. I should have started mind mapping years and years ago. And I would encourage you that if you're younger, like if you're in your, well, I don't know if I have a younger set watching, like in your, the teens or your preteens, or even younger than that, or if you have youngsters that you are working with in art, get them started with mind mapping. Now, not everybody's going to enjoy it. Not everybody's going to like it, but some some people will pick it up. And can you imagine a lifetime of art from mind mapping? I can't imagine. I cannot imagine where I could have gone with this. But the past is the past. We're in the present. And I'm going to use this to my fullest <laughs> capacity that I can today. But I want to show you how I'm growing in it. I started mind mapping a female character and a male character. And that got me to thinking of all of the characteristics of a character, such as a character in a story. Like what is their personality? What is their body shape, their face, their name, their age? Where do they live now? What kind of a house do they live in? Is it in the United States? Is it another part of the world? Uh, what is it like living there? Do they rent? Do they own? Uh, do they like to garden? You know, you can just go on and on and on about one person. And then I did the same thing with a male character, all the same characteristics, but I put the female character in purple on sort of a tan tone and the male on green and sort of a tan tone only because those are the colors I had available to me at the time. Then, you'll see I got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of this, to like B on page 819. And I ended up numbering all my pages. And here is B on 819. And you can see that I'm no longer purple and tan. But here, I'm on the face. See, here's face, B, page 819. 819B face. So here are all the characteristics of a face. Here's the education one. This is E. Um, see, I got coming from 821 and 822. If I would go back to 822, that's where my main chart is here. 821 and 822. And you can just carry this on. Here's the residence one. 
You can see I have quite a few. Occupation, the pets, intelligence, their favorites. Over here I'm getting into social media. And here is kind of where I left off because I got I got detracted by another really fun project. At the very front here, I did a caricature of Dee Dee Willingham because she inspired this entire magazine idea of Playground Art Journal. I think I'm going to leave this out and do some more work in it. I need to get back to it. This is all with the Society of Idea Collectors and Dee Dee Willingham's uh, inspiration for me. In 2017, I started following Dee Dee Willingham probably around August. In the description box below, you will see a link to Dee Dee Willingham's Society of Idea Collectors playlist. If you're at all interested in this, this is kind of like a separate project that Dee Dee Willingham started in 2017, and I've been following along. I just live for her Society of Idea Collector videos, which she usually does on a Monday. Not every Monday, but I think she's up to like episode 25 now. I think her last one was episode 25. But here is a typical uh, inspired from Dee Dee Willingham because she draws a circle and she has a topic in the circle and she does her questions who, what, when, where, why, and how. And some of my mind maps have been very elementary. Let's flip to one. Here's one. She, she inspired us to mind map each one of our topics in our I Society of Idea Collectors journal. One of my topics was my art activities. Um, just, I, I chose, I chose a topic out of an art activity, which is a time I was doing, um, design for recycled parts for art. And one of the ideas that Jerry sent to me was a Betty, a Betty Crocker cookbook. And I was mind mapping how I could use that Betty Crocker cookbook in my design video for recycled parts for art and i got the how the when the where the why the what but it's very elementary and i did that for each one of my topics in here's the one for writing i chose a word for writing lemniscate l-e-m-n-i-s-c-a-t-e which is a word for the infinity symbol. Let's see, I've got another one marked here. Around Halloween, she did a mind map of a holiday of Halloween. And this is my mind map that I developed from her mind map as I was watching her video. This is a little bit more of a refined one. I have another one where I did a lot of scribbling as I was getting ideas and then I refined it here. And then People would give her suggestions of things that were associated with Halloween, and then you would pick numbers. She would have somebody in her audience, her online audience, give her three numbers. And I ended up with the wolf, the spider, and a skeleton. And I did these ATCs. These are copies of the ATCs. I think I sent the ATCs off. I think I had a drawing for them on my channel. And I gave away my wolf. ATCs. I have another one. Yeah, I made a copy of it. This was the 9 by 12 art sketch that I did based off of that mind map. The wolf, the skeleton, and the spider. Then I have another one, the same thing in Halloween, that I did Sebastian. Halloween. Here's the Halloween mind map that I think I actually did with Dee Dee as I was watching her video. And I got the who, what, when, where, why, and how, and then I chose full moon, uh, the spiders, and abstract, and scary stories. And then I developed this whole, off of this mind map, I developed this story of Sebastian. And these are all my little notes that as inspiration was coming to me. I was just writing them down as fast as I could think of them. And that's my scribbly notes. And then I got a, a very base sketch of what I thought Sebastian 
might look like. And of course, he's just a very scribbly sketch. I think I started scribbling him out here, but I knew I wanted a gold heart on his back. So I, I started scribbling, and here's the gold heart, and then I started developing with a sailor hat. And I believe this is my first sketch of Sebastian. Here's one that I did just as a prototype. So fun. Here's Sebastian, where I mind mapped Sebastian. Uh, the full moon, the when, the where, the why. I was getting more into this story that I was developing over here. So here's as I get into chapter 2 and 3, and I did prototypes. Here's the full moon, and I got into the flying squirrel and Sebastian, and they're going to go trick-or-treating on the moon. I got this Henri Odell here who kind of criticizes everything that they do. <laughs> here he is here, <laughs> sketching. I think I had a sketched off of a reference photo here. And here is where I was developing their trip home from trick-or-treating. And then when I got into the writing tab, I have each chapter of Sebastian. I wrote, just wrote out the outline, wrote what I could think of, and then I started drafting it and developing it. And then I read it in my video. Chapter 1, Chapter 2. Chapter 2 is my finish here. Uh, chapter 3 and Chapter 4. So that was very fun to do, and I developed that entire Sebastian series off of my mind map. So what am I doing with mind mapping in 2017? I thought, well, I need blank mind maps with all the who, what, where, when, why, how questions. So I took, I drew a mind map, took a circle, drew the circle, and did all the questions, added a few of my own. I added another one called Wow that I don't have on my template, but I have a template. Took it to the library and we devised a two-sided template that I can run through the photocopy machine. I also have been mind mapping for, the, uh, for my creative year colors because color was the February topic in my creative year. I made a list, Dee Dee talks about lists. These are things that are red. But here I wanted to dwell more on using color in your mind map. So here's my mind map. I just looked around my studio for things that were red. I found some red lace, a sort of a dark red poker chip, some red trim, some red washi tape, some red bling, a piece of a red tape measure, a red button, some more red washi tape, and of course red paint. And here I started using paints and ink. And I didn't want to write words out on this mind map. I wanted it to be very visual, which got into the how you handle paint and the color red. And uh, then over here, I started doing a verbal mind map of the color red. Why is red red? Why do we see red as red and not as blue? Does everybody see red in the same way? All of these questions developing off of this red mind map and here's where I did a blue one along the same lines blue here's the verbal one here are the here are some blue quotes here are just some experiments that I was playing with blue inks and and paints on this very splashy I have a bit of a blue towel that I glued down here here are my list of things that are blue and here is my painty blue mind map. This was very subjective, very interactive. Right now, as you look at it, you're going, that's a mind map. It is a mind map in the sense that while I was working with it, my mind was thinking about different colors of blue, different media that have blue colors and how they work and play with each other. Like there's some metallic blue in there. Uh, the whole time that I was doing this mind map, artistically and visually, my mind was thinking about the color blue. More mind mapping. This is where it starts to be fun for me. And that's in my Friday Night Lives, we did some group mind maps. Just one night, I said, well, I was working on my little mini glue book. And we picked 
Einstein. I was doing a page of Einstein. I just had a little blue book image of him, and I put a hat on him. And one of the participants in my Friday Night Live said, let's mind map Einstein. So I got out my mind map template, and we started mind mapping Einstein. And let me tell you, I learned more about Einstein, <laughs> you know, equal MC squared. I know that's a, a formula that Einstein created, and it has a lot of meaning of energy mass and the speed of light. Why was that formula so important? That was one of the questions I wrote. And here's where I got in with my wow. I added another W word. I like to add questions. We have the who, what, when, where, why, and how. I've added why not, whatever, uh, wherever, and now I've added wow. And the wow for me is, wow, that just inspires me. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I've got to write this down. This is the inspiration. This is where you go, man, that's interesting. So one of the other weeks in our live session, because we did Einstein and it was so inspiring, about the time that Stephen Hawking passed away, we had to mind map Stephen Hawking. And here I just drew a little sketch of Stephen Hawking. It's more of a factual mind map. You don't see a lot of visuals on here, but how fun it is to do with a group as a group project. As I'm doing this live, I'm getting all these facts and quotes and everything coming at me. And believe me, I, I miss a lot of them. But look how I filled up my page. Stephen Hawking. Here we did Da Vinci. That's a, this one I did live. <laughs> a very... <laughs> A very uh, sketchy sketch of da Vinci, but I know what it means. This this represents Leonardo da Vinci, and again, it's very factual. Where was he born? Who influenced him? Uh, what types of art did he do? And, and I'm just writing them down as fast as I can. So these were very fun to do. Very, very fun to do. Now in here... This is from my 2018, and these are some that uh, were inspired by Dee Dee Willingham herself. You can see I don't have my template here. I was watching her video, and I just drew it out. Uh, she wanted to do a mind map, and one of her assignments was low-tech mech, and I chose mech mean a mechanism, low-tech mechanism, something that doesn't involve a lot of intricate computerization or mechanics and I chose Velcro and I mind map Velcro in the sense that I gathered all these facts about Velcro. There's not a lot of visual on this page. A paintbrush, a whisk, and here I get into some more. I'm trying to get visual with it. Here I have a story of a Velcro, a whisk, and a paintbrush. And I have a little story that goes with that. And I think I tell the story. Which brings me to the very last mind map that we did in my last Friday live session, which was April 20th, 2017, if you're watching this on a replay. We mind map Pablo Picasso. I started with a blank sheet of paper when we started. A blank sheet of paper. In the in the live session, I did on I went to Wiki Commons. I pulled up a public domain image, which happened to be a Pablo Picasso stamp, and I just did the sketch of Pablo Picasso that was on that postage stamp. And that's what this represents. Because I wanted the central topic of Pablo Picasso. Then everybody that was in my live session, and this is where it gets fun for me, they start feeding me all these interesting things about Pablo Picasso, and I'm writing them down as fast as I can. I went to a little bit larger sheet of paper, but I find when I do that, I write larger. <laughs> so I, it's not that I get any more facts on my paper, it's just that they're more legible. But as I was looking at this, I go, okay... I was not really happy with this mind map when I turned off my live session. I'm going, there's something missing on here. And I was telling the group that I may develop this a little bit more. 
as I work on my art in the next week. But the next day, which was Saturday, I was looking at it and I'm going, don't touch it, Mary. Don't touch it. It's perfect the way it is <laughs> because it is what it was. And it's, it's very, I want to say it's not an organized mind map. But why do you want to organize it? We don't think, well, maybe a very organized person may think organized and put things down. Maybe they developed their technique like I did. Here we're thinking very organized. We got our who, what, where, when, why, and how. And I can generally associate my notes with the questions. Here, here, I did not try to organize what was coming at me. I was putting on the page what was being fed to me about Pablo Picasso in my live session. So I have cubism here. He was born in Spain here. He's got some quotes here. I knew from some of my previous uh, readings on Pablo Picasso that he repainted his, his canvases at times. I see that I used the green around here for the postage stamp but not for any meaning. And I wanted some color on this page because I started out in blue. I did all of this in blue and I'm going, well, I want to start developing some color on my pages. So I just got out the pink. And who influenced Pablo Picasso? And I did do that in pink. And we got into some of the artists that he, he was associated with, which I learned that there's another one that really belongs up here. But I'm not going to add it because we didn't talk about it that night. Um, here, who influenced him? I kept saying, where did he get his start? That always interests me about artists. How, who influenced them to start their art? Was it at a young age? Were they, were they in their uh, late teens, early 20s? What did they have to do to go into their art career? How did they develop it? Most of all, who influenced it? And one of the participants said his father was an art teacher. How interesting is that? How interesting is that? I'd love to know. I could see some stories developing off of his father teaching Pablo Picasso art. And Picasso either doing, yeah, dad, this is how you do it. I'll do it how you say. But then later, going back, you know, that... Quote, every child is an artist. The problem is to remain an artist once they grow up. So I can see Pablo Picasso satisfying his father's art teacher tendencies, but then kind of overriding some of his child tendencies to scribble and draw, and then maybe later in life going back to that. He did get into cubism which is what I want to talk more about because on the back, what I'm going to do is we are going to mind map. We're doing a series in my live sessions, different live sessions. I don't know when or where, but we're going to mind map famous artists. The next one we're going to do is Mary uh, Cassette. But what I want to do rather than adding to or manipulating or refining this mind map is turn it over and you can see the pen that I use bled through so I have some gesso. I'm going to gesso this out and I'm going to pick an art style that they worked in. For Picasso is cubism and of course Penelope has to get into this and I am going to do, I'll go into fast forward to do that. I'm going to do it in this video. I'm going to do a art piece on the back here using the style of cubism as I interpret it. I'm not a, you know, I'm not an expert. This is just Mary's interpretation of cubism, which I read a little about it. And the basic premise of it is not realism. You're going to look at your object from different perspectives. You're not going to say, okay, I'm looking at her head on. I see her face. I see the pins. You may see one thing about Pablo Picasso is I see paintings where he does a lady's face looking directly at you, and then he'll do a profile 
of that lady's face right on the same face of the lady who's looking at you directly. And I may do something like that with Penelope. I don't know. The first thing I'm going to do is gesso it. I'm going to get started. But on each one, each time that we mind map a, a, a master artist or a well-known artist or maybe even a not-so-well-known artist, I'm going to turn the page over, gesso it, and be inspired by their style. Now, I know this video's been chatty. I know it's probably pretty long, but I want to show you how mind mapping can influence you, influence your art, and how you can even grow in the ways that you mind map. And don't take this as the only way that Mary Abrams is ever going to mind map. I may go back to my who, what, when, where, why, how questions. I, I love getting historical facts on here. I like the verbal mind mapping, but I also like the photographs, the very first assignment that Dee Dee Willingham gave us. So I'm going to go into fast forward and work on the back of this, and I'm going to do a picture, a painting, and I'm going to do a picture painting sketch of Penelope in the cubism style. And she may be the main source. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm thinking right now she's going to be painted in all the different styles of the artist. Just a fun project to do. So thank you for watching. And I hope that you continue to watch my fast forward. This will probably be the last verbal that you'll hear from me in this video. So I will say please enjoy and I will see you on the next page.